Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle. Now, a couple of days ago, I watched this video on uh, Sarah's Nightstand, her channel, Sarah's channel, and uh, it was so much fun that I decided I needed to give it a whirl for myself. She was playing a scavenger hunt game in order to discover her next read. So I'll link that video down below and she talks about where she got the idea from uh, and everything. And so I just decided to uh, take the scavenger hunt questions and play the game myself because it was so much fun. So this is, uh, I think this is going to turn into a series. I'm going to call it Game My Library. I like playing games. I like any excuse to hunt through my bookshelves. And so this will be Game My Library Scavenger Hunt Edition. So the first item is to grab your favorite book. Go to the acknowledgments and the first name you see, find the book, find a book by an author of the same name. So I went for The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Now this doesn't have acknowledgments at the beginning, but it does have a preface, which I felt like was similar enough that I, that I used it. And so the first name that I came across was Charles Dickens. And so I decided to use the name Charles for the purposes of this scavenger hunt. So number two, pick something on that cover and find another book with the thing in the title. So the book that I found by an author of the same name was this, The, the Vanishing Man by Charles Fitch. Now, I was supposed to pick something on the cover and find another book with that thing in the title. Now this is where LibraryThing.com came in super handy. Erin and I keep all of our books on a, a database. The website's called LibraryThing.com. You can put all your books on there. You can do it via um, ISBN. It's really convenient. So it keeps all your books on there and you can search by author, by title, by keyword. So it's super, super fantastic and we really, really love it. And so I took a look at what was on this cover. So you can see it's a, it's a Victorian era street. So there's these buildings, there's a boy here holding an umbrella, there's a gas lamp, there's these handsome cabs. So first I searched umbrella, no luck. Uh, I searched lamp, no luck. I searched handsome, no luck, cab, no luck. So I tried carriage and I came up with I, one book. I own one book that has the name carriage in the title. And that is Airing in a Closed Carriage by Joseph Shearing. And actually it was really fun that I found this book because I'd completely forgotten that I, that I owned this, but it sounds really interesting. It was published in um, 1943. This edition is from 1962, but it was published in 1943 and it's based on a sensational English murder trial of 1889. And uh, Mae Tyler was on trial for the arsenic murder of her senile drug addicted English husband and it takes place in Manchester. So even if nothing else is super successful from the scavenger hunt, finding this book was because I'm totally gonna read it. I'm super excited. Okay, so airing in a closed carriage. Number three, go to page 50, line five. Pick a word from that line and find a title with that word. So I went to page 50, line five, and the sentence was, or the, the words on that line were, of the English pharmaceutists, monsieur, but in this. So there's some good possibilities in there, but I decided to go with the word English. And I again used library thing to hunt down any books that I have that with the word English in the title. And I came up with this, Aikenfield, Ronald Bly's famous portrait of an English village. Uh, this book was published in 1969 and uh, it was apparently a huge bestseller at the time. He uh, does a close-up of a Suffolk village 
Um, and according to C.P. Snow, he forecasted that it would become a classic of its kind. So again, this book sounds really interesting. I haven't read this book yet either. Um, but anyway, so number four is to find a five-star read with the same colors on the cover. So these, this is kind of looks like a painting. Uh, so it's kind of got these muted colors. So the sky is blue, kind of this purpley blue. There's kind of cream stone colored, uh, some greens and some kind of pinkish browns and browns. So I had to hunt down a book that I've given five stars to that had the same colors on the cover. And for that, I went to Goodreads and searched for my five star reads and uh, kind of just started to look, trying to remember what the covers looked like. And I came up with C.S. Harris's Why Kings Confess. And I think, I think I did okay, actually, if you combine, compare them here. So it's got this kind of bluey, purpley cover, color, that muted sort of colors with the browns and the, some yellow. I think it's close enough. Uh, I'm gonna totally make it count. So I ha now have Why Kings Confess by C.S. Harris. I love this series. It's a series set in um, the Regency, I think, or else Georgian uh, time period. Um, and uh, it's a historical mystery series that I really, really love. And so this one is, I'm not sure which one this is in the series. None of, none of this matters, but um, I enjoy these books, so I thought I would say. Yeah, it's like nine or tenth in the series, um, and I gave it five stars. I think I've given most of the books in this series five stars. I really enjoy it. So uh, then I was to find a book with the same number of pages. So this book has 334 pages. And there was nothing else for it but for me to just go to my shelf and start pulling out books and checking the page numbers. And that's exactly what I did. And that took a while, but I finally found The Solitary House by Lynn Shepard. And this has 334 pages. Yeah, 334 pages. So flip to any page, the first name you see, find a book by an author who shares that name. Now, <laughs> this is where it got interesting because this is a Victorian, um, a Victorian historical mystery. And the first page I flipped to, the first name that I came across was Turklington. And I knew immediately, there was no chance I have a book in my library from someone named Turklington. So then I looked for the next name on the page and it was Bucket. <laughs> and again, I don't have any books by someone called Bucket. So I had to try another page. Uh, the, the next page I tried had the name Maddox. And so I gave that a whirl. I checked on library thing, no joy. So the next name I came across was Phil. And I thought, all right, there's a good chance we have a book by someone called Phil or Philip. And so I checked on library thing and there was two choices. One by the author used the full name Philip, but I actually found a book and the author goes by Phil. And uh, so I found this, Ticket to the Opera by Phil G. Golding. Uh, subtitle, Discovering and Exploring 100 Famous Works, History, Lore, and Singers with Recommended Recordings. So there you go. I, I enjoy the opera, uh, and uh, so this is a good reference book for that. But the name is exactly right, Phil Golding. So then the next... Uh, the next prompt on this scavenger hunt was to find another title with the same numbers of the same number of letters. So Ticket to the Opera is 16 letters. 
and I needed to find another title that had 16 letters. And once again, I just had to go to my shelves and start counting the, the letters in the titles. So this took a little while, but I managed to find The Wild Irish Girl by Sydney Owenson, Lady Morgan. And this is an Oxford World's Classic. Um, I haven't read this book yet. Uh, this was published originally in, let me see, I don't know, the 1800s I think, 1806. So. The next prompt, once I found this book, was to find a book with a similar cover. Now take a look at this. What immediately comes to mind? Jane Austen, right? So I went to my Jane Austen collection and I found my Wordsworth edition of Pride and Prejudice. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So there we go, we both, we have uh, a single woman sitting down, the hair is the same, dark hair with those curls, the dresses are the same. Uh, yeah, so I totally went with Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, and uh, the back has um, one of the sisters playing the piano. And so, but yeah, so that totally worked. Then I was to flip to a random page, point at a word, and find that word in a book title on your TBR shelf. So I did. I randomly opened it to a page, pointed at a word, and I came up with the word they. So I again, I did another search through library thing to see what I had uh, with books with they in the title, and I had a number of options. But the first one that I came across that I hadn't read yet was Georgette Hayer's They Found Him Dead. So this is going to be my next read. This was super fun uh, and I'm excited. I have been wanting to read more Georgette Hayer, but you know, I mean, there I have so many options and you get distracted with lots of things. And so I'm really excited that this is gonna be my next read. They Found Him Dead is one of her mysteries. She, she wrote plenty of Regency romances, which I love. Um, they're kind of one of my uh, guilty pleasures, like hidden, uh, hidden joys. I, I don't read, I don't really read romances, um, but I like Georgette Hare style Regency romances. So, so clean historical, um, historical books. But this is one of her mysteries, and this is from the 30s. This is from 1937. Uh, octogenarian assassin? Question mark. Hush, hush. A killer has come to call. Double murder, and all the clues point to a little old lady of 80 as the killer. But Superintendent Hannah's side begins to wonder, especially about that fateful revolver shot. So I'm super excited to pick up Georgia Hare's They Found Him Dead. I'm gonna include these uh, prompts for the scavenger hunt down in the description box. So if you wanna play along, I highly recommend it. It was really fun. It was a, a great way to spend some time, uh, especially now that we're still uh, kind of stuck at home uh, for a bit. So it's a great way to, to, to spend some time. It's a fun game to play that gets you looking through your bookshelves. And I had a lot of fun doing this. So if you want to play along, that would be great. And if you do play along, uh, let me know down in the comment section what book you ended up with. What is your next read based on this scavenger hunt? And if you end up doing a video, let me know too, because I would totally love to watch that. Thanks, and I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.